Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Learning with Jelly. So last video, I talked about a simple linear regression, and I mentioned that before you run a linear regression, there are certain model assumptions that you must check to ensure that a linear regression model is actually appropriate for your data. So today we're going to go over part one of those assumptions. I will follow up with a part two, but this is lesson 22. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the agenda for today, we're going to define those four main assumptions. It's more like five in my opinion, but four main assumptions that we're going to look at. So what are those assumptions that we must check? And today we're only going to focus on assumptions that you can check before you actually model your data. So just standard exploratory data analysis is going to help you check for two of these assumptions. All right, so the four main assumptions of linear regression. So linearity, so that means does your predictors or your X's have a linear relationship with Y? Normality of your errors, also known as your residuals. Homoscedasticity, and that is a tongue twister, but that means that your residuals should also have constant or equal variance and independence of your observations. So observations in your data set cannot be related to one another. So how I like to think about that is, say for instance, you are trying to model income and you have spouses in the same data set. So maybe one spouse is going to report the combined income of the household and another spouse is going to report that same combined income. So if you have two spouses in a data set, if you're trying to do something like income, that would mean that your observations are not independent, okay? So you really want unique observations in your data set. This is not something that you can test, but it's something that you can ask about. Um, once the client gives you data, you can kind of ask where the data came from, was it randomly sampled, all of those good things. But there aren't any tests per se where you can check whether or not your observations are independent, okay? Homoscedasticity is one of those things, and oops, let me go back, that um, basically when I'm talking about equal variance, and let's just go ahead and look at a drawing in this case, I'm talking about that my errors are all normal data points throughout. Okay, homoscedasticity, you're going to see a pattern in the variance, and we're going to talk about this in a future um, lecture, but pretty much it kind of has like a shape to it. And sometimes we call that like a funnel shape. So I just want random areas with errors with equal variance, and I also want my errors to be normally distributed. Linearity means do I have a linear relationship between my X and Y's? So it could be a negative linear relationship. It could, for instance, be a positive linear relationship, but it's not going to be something like quadratic in nature, right? It's not going to be something that's exponential in nature as well. So we just want a straight line relationship. So those are just what are those four assumptions. Uh, we're going to talk about linearity today. Okay, so moving on, some things that you should be aware of is that predictor variables that are highly related to one another. So this is called the concept of multicollinearity. And if you have two predictor variables, so we're talking about our X's only, if two X's are highly related to one another, that could cause your model to produce false coefficients or false betas, okay? And go back to the previous video for those who need to understand what regression is, 
okay? But we don't want those false beta values, okay? And also you need to be aware of outliers because outliers can also be a problem with our coefficients and betas, okay? So today we're gonna check to see if there's a linear relationship between X and Y. And we're also going to discuss if there is a strong relationship between our X's. All right, so things that I can check before I actually run the model itself is the linear relationship between X and Y, as I've mentioned, and if we have any X's that exhibit high multicollinearity. So some examples of X's that may exhibit that is something like height and weight, okay? These two X variables can be strongly related to one another. So your option is that you can choose to use only one of those variables in your model, okay? All right, so how can I check these assumptions? Before we talk about checking the assumption, assumptions, I want you to really have a visual up here about what we mean by a linear relationship. So the linear relationship can be a positive linear relationship. That means as X increases, y also increases it could be a negative relationship whereas x increases y decreases those are the types of relationships that we're looking for in linear regression it's called linear regression because your x's have a linear relationship to your y okay things that are not considered linear regression in this case it uses an example of an exponential relationship a quadratic relationship is not linear a multiple polynomial relationship with some trend is also not linear so we're looking for these first two right that's what we're going to check is our x linear related to our y okay so let's see how we can check that in SAS. All right. So we have a business problem here. And the first assumption that we're checking is do my X's have a linear relationship with Y? And the business problem is are my numeric predictor variables? So in this data set, we have number of stores, inventory, and returns. Are they linearly associated or correlated with my target, which is sales? So my target is the sales from the store, and I want to predict sales using the number of stores, the, num the number of inventory at the store, and the number of returns. So I'm going to hop into SAS Studio. You all have access to SAS Studio. If you do not have this free version of SAS On Demand for Academics, please look in the description of below for my first video, and it takes you how to get this software. So, of course, on the left-hand side, we have our server files and folders. I'm going to click on libraries. And once I expand libraries, I'm going to explain the SAS help folder. These are a whole bunch of test data sets that you can utilize that's already built into SAS. So you can copy the same exact code, and this code will work for you. Okay, so I'm going to do our shoes. So I'm going to scroll down to where I have shoes. And keep in mind that my Y is sales and I'm using my numeric predictors to see if they are linear, linearly associated with sales. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is do a proc core because that correlation procedure helps us look at the association between two variables. I'm gonna do data equals sas help dot shoes because that is the name of our data set, okay? And I'm gonna put a with statement and I'm gonna type in my Y variable, which is sales, and I'm gonna go ahead and run. Now, one thing that I wanna know is that we're looking for Pearson R correlation coefficients that's greater than about 0 0.7. Now this cutoff may vary, okay? Depends on your business problem, things of that nature, but that's what we're looking for, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and highlight it and run, okay? And this is what I get here. So I see down here, I have my Pearson correlation coefficient. 
I see that stores has a 0.42 linear relationship with sales. Inventory has a 0.95. Returns has a 0.96. And it's on a scale of negative one to one. And my less than 0.001 means that these are significant relationships. I'm actually going to want to print this out. Okay, so I'm going to actually do a plot equal and in parentheses, I'm going to put scatter matrix so I can actually visually see that linear relationship. Okay, so I'm going to run this. Okay. And this is what I wanna see here at the bottom. So I see sales and I see stores, and it looks like that may have a slight linear relationship that's not super strong. Inventory versus sales, which is this middle one, looks like it has a strong positive linear relationship. And returns versus sales also looks like it has a pretty strong linear relationship, okay? But I noticed that I also have outliers that could be influencing this, all right? But for the most part, I don't see any weird quadratic issues. I don't see any weird exponential issues. So I'm gonna say that all of my numeric variables have a linear relationship with my Y, which is sales. All right, awesome. So let's go back to that code. Okay, so here we have our proc core. As I mentioned, we did a plot to look at the scatter matrix, and you're just looking to see if there is a linear relationship between each one of your X's and Y's. If I had to choose the most important variables here, I would use inventory and returns because they have a stronger linear relationship to my Y than the number of stores. Okay. The next thing that we can still do with a prop core is that we can look at multicollinearity among predictors. So you don't want predictors that have high multicollinearity between each other because that can inflate your coefficients variance, okay? So it could give you misleading results. So you can measure this in two ways. You can either use VIF, which is the variance inflation factor, or you could use that Pearson correlation coefficient, okay? Greater than 0 0.7, this cutoff may vary. So we're actually gonna do the same prop core. This time we're gonna do with multicollinearity. And remember that's X's. So looking for X's with strong multicollinearity. Okay. So that's my comment. So I'm going to still do a proc core data equals sas help dot shoes. Okay. And in this case, I'm going to have, I'm just going to run a standard one. Okay. So I'm going to run it. And then I get my correlation matrix. Okay. So in this case, I'm looking at all my X's. So I'm not concerned about sales because we know sales is my Y. So I'm not concerned about sales in this case. Okay. I see here that inventory in returns has a value that is greater than 0 0.7. It almost has a 0 0.9 correlation. That means that these two X variables could have high multicollinearity, okay? So what does that mean? That I can either use one or the other in my model, okay? So that is one way where we can test for multicollinearity instead of having my whip sales, which is my Y variable. I just run a standard prop core just to look at all of my X variables against each other, okay? And this is our output that we have on our data set, okay? So we see in this case, inventory and returns, which are both X variables, they tend to have a high multicollinearity of 0 0.9, and we can choose to use one variable over the other, just depends on our business problem. Now, a little level up about that VIF. So VIF is another way to measure multicollinearity. It's called the variance inflation factor. You're usually looking for a value that is greater than 10, okay? So if it is equal to 10, 
That means the variance of the coefficients is inflated by 10 times versus a model without any multicollinearity. And so we see here in our snapshot of the variance inflation factors to the right hand of our chart, we see inventory is almost at a six and return is almost at a five. So that means inventory by itself when used with returns is inflating that um, variance of your coefficients by almost six times, okay? So it's something to be aware of. How do you actually get VIF? Well, this is the code that we have for you at the bottom. You're gonna run your proc reg that we talked about in the last lecture. You're gonna model your Y equal to all your X's, and then you're gonna do this slash VIF. And this is going to be the printout that you get, okay? So what do I want you to know? Because I know that this is a lot when learning regression for the first time. I want you to know the four main assumptions, linearity, normality of errors, homoscedasticity of errors, and independence of observations. I want you to know things like multicollinearity among your X's and outliers can influence your coefficients. I want you to know what a linear relationship actually is. And I want you to be able to check for that linear relationship between X and Y by using proc core. And you also can use proc core by checking that relationship against your X's as well. Okay. So thank you all for part one of our linear regression model assumptions. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you for part two. Thank you. Bye-bye.